Herzlich willkommen zu Senkrechtstarter, euer YouTube-Kanal für alles über Raumfahrt. Ich bin hier mit Nils Helset. Hi Nils. Hello. So, you founded a company called Digifarm, right? Uh, so co-founded and uh, you're the CEO. I give you like one minute, so uh, in the elevator pitch. What is your company and what are you doing and why do we need it? <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good question. So I'm Nils, I'm one of the co-founders and CEOs of Digifarm. Uh, we're an ag tech startup based in Norway, as you mentioned, and we focus on a very core thing, and it's uh, detection of field boundaries using satellite data. And you think, why, does, why do field boundaries matter, right? Why are they important? But it actually is the key fundamental data layer to any precision ag service or in-field analytics. Okay. And what happens now is that me as a farmer, um, you know, we, we, we normally manually digitize these boundaries on a map actually when we're applying for subsidies or we're doing our crop insurance, we're doing our variable rate. And uh, trust me when I say this, it's quite painful. Mm. It's time consuming, it's expensive. So, so we built this model uh, to super resolve Sentinel-2 data from 10 meter to one meter. And then we automatically detect field boundaries and seeded acres based on it. Uh, much higher accuracy. And we delivered this data to, to businesses and governments. Okay, you, you have me, so I want to know more. Uh, um, Sentinel-2, so this is like a free available satellite imagery from uh, the EU and ESA, um, like an Earth observation satellite, right? And uh, you mentioned it, it's a resolution of 10 meters per pixel. And this is two cores for like uh, the stuff that you want to do with it, right? So super resolution, is, is it like magic or what? Does it do? Or how can you use it? Like yeah, it's, it a, it's a great question. And, and when we started, it sounded like magic to me too, because I'm just a farmer. So luckily I have smarter people than me involved in the technology. But yeah, exactly. 83% <laughs> of all the field boundaries in the world are actually smaller than two hectares. So mm. the majority are in smallholder markets. And also in Europe, we have boundaries typically smaller than five hectares. And when you think about the pixel size of a Sentinel-2, the 10 meter, it's just too low resolution for us to be able to accurately detect boundaries when you think about shadow lines or edges of fields. So, so yeah, we do a super resolution. It's a complete reconstruction of all the 10 bands. And uh, it, it also bypasses the, the, the ability for us not to have to buy commercial grade satellite data, which mm. would be very expensive. Yeah. So 10 bands, that, so that means the frequency bands the uh, satellite use, right? Uh, all the 10 meter bands, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and mm, this data is freely available. So um, that's a cool thing. And ESA really wants to push that to knowledge so people use it and make useful stuff with it. Sometimes maybe it's concerning that everybody on the world can use it. I mean, European or ESA uh, taxpayer money uh, built the satellites and so everybody can use it. Is there like a concern on your side that I don't know, like a Chinese startup is doing the same and uh, yeah. It's a great question. And, and yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's one of the downfalls of having open source data, but we, we, it's, from our perspective, it's the most wonderful data set. You know, it's, it's great data. We also looked at commercial providers and when we look at Sentinel-2, it's just a fantastic piece of hardware and, and optical data for us. So it matches the perfect use case for us, even at the one meter to be able to do it on boundaries in APAC and in India and Africa. But yeah, I mean, there is, of course, that concern with risk. But for now, you know, we don't work in certain regions, of course. So for us, e Europe is our home market and it's where we're growing and, and scaling and providing services. And with the close connection we have with EFSA and the European Commission, I think this is, this is helping at least uh, bringing it back home or keeping it back home, so to say. Mm. Yeah. So when we're talking about uh, satellite imagery, there are satellites that are finer resolution, so like two centimeters um, resolution, right? Um, but the data is really expensive, right? So um, to do the things you're doing with the commercial data would be much more expensive, right? And uh, so uh, there are customers uh, around the farming business that uh, use this data to do to, to useful stuff or make their business more profitable. Um, and it's possible because the Sentinel-2 data is not expensive, right? Exactly. That's exactly the use case. And, and you're absolutely right. We, we looked actually at commercial grade satellite data. And when you think about maybe the cheapest commercial solutions, a three meter maybe from planet. And the problem is it's quite also expensive for us to do. So, uh, you know, for us to do all the, the, the imagery for Germany, for example, for a year, because we need three to four images, it would cost us close to a million euros. So for us, it's also a cost perspective. I mean, we do large areas. Agriculture is not the maybe the biggest purchaser of, of commercial grade satellite data. 
Um, but yeah, one use case which is quite interesting on how our, our clients use it is we work quite a lot in the common agriculture policy changes now in national pain agencies. And we work now with several pain agencies in Europe, which use this data as a pre-filled application, so to say, for farmers to apply for subsidies. Mm. Because this is actually typically done where farmers are drawing on uh, aerial imagery or uh, orthophoto that's taken normally two to three year uh, data, two year old, uh, old. And the problem is that boundaries do change every year, so to say. So farmers are drawing manually into, into an image that might be two to three years old. So what we do is we pay them a countrywide kind of mosaic with boundaries. And this helps both the farmer apply for subsidies quicker and get more accurate payments, but also helps the agencies save somewhere on 25% in their monitoring costs. So, mm. yeah. so you, you mentioned like the real data or the, the real world data. So the, the things that you're predicting with uh, super resolution can be measured right away. So if you, you're, you told us you're a farmer as well, yeah. so yeah. you can use the algorithm to, to uh, measure your, your farm and to see the boundaries. And you probably know exactly where the boundaries are, so you know how good your algorithm is. Um, is this done a, lo a lot? So are, are people using real data to ver verify your, uh, your data? Or how do you tell your customer that your data are so good? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a great question. And there's a couple of things. I think first is that we have a very thorough process internally to create manual training data. Because as you'd imagine, boundaries and agricultural land is completely different in Norway than it is in India and Brazil. So we actually do a lot of labeling ourselves internally, basically drawing boundaries you know, manually into a system. And we've done now two and a half million boundaries manual over the last three years. And we have a team of 30 people that are doing it full time. So for us, it's a continuous effort. But uh, what we do to measure accuracy, of course, is, is use 90% for training data and then 10% of validation. And another aspect is that when we work with the governments, et cetera, we compare the data that they have from their farmers to, of course, to what we have. And this creates the accuracy, basically, assessment. Uh, and of course, on top, we have RTK data for machinery and farmers to validate it continuously through our API. So hmm. it's a continuous process, but yeah. yeah. And I mean, we're here at the Innerspace Masters because uh, you're like a, um, uh, a lighthouse of what Innerspace Masters should be like uh, using the satellite data and make something uh, useful for another branch. Um, uh, What is your story? So when have you started and where are you now? Yeah, great, great question. And yeah, we started in 2019. And, and yeah, as you mentioned, I'm also a 15th generation farmer and crop producer. So <laughs> some of it was from my own pain point, I think, just yeah. having to do this manual. And I think from, from a farmer's perspective, there's a lot of fragmentation in the tree. And I think automation and making things simple will certainly help adaptation or adoption of precision ag service and new technologies. But yeah, so we started in 2019. Today, we're 55 people. Um, and we're remote only, so we're in 12 different countries and we have uh, 40 different clients in 17 different countries. So anywhere from Bio Crop Science to KWS to pain agencies in Lithuania and Austria and US and different ones. And we're, we're just very humbled and grateful that our clients are, or we built something that our clients actually, actually uh, are, are like and are using. But yeah, we managed to go through the program. So InnoSpace was kind of the first springboard for us to be able to get through ESABIC Norway and then European Space Agency Demonstration Project. And most recently, we, we closed the secured funding from the EIC Accelerator, uh, where, we do, where we're getting funding from the EIB as well. So it's, it's certainly been a progression, but uh, this InnoSpace was certainly the beginning of, of our journey. Cool. So it's nice to be back. And are there any next steps in your technology? So uh, what, what is possible or what do you uh, want to um, make better? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think for us, we, we, we focus on a very core thing for a long time, three years doing crop boundaries, so to say, or grain boundaries and the super resolution. And now we're moving more progressively into you know, tree crops and pastures. And I think this will continue to grow for us, the part of sort of objects you can detect from imagery. So, um, and we build kind of an infrastructure or processing pipeline that enables us to do this. And I think that's exciting for us, you know. Um, and of course, there's areas which are still complex and difficult, like Africa, which we're continuously working on getting. But um, one interesting fact is that 30% or so of all field boundaries or agricultural land in the world is not mapped or digitized. Mm -hmm. So, and you can imagine this majority is APAC and smallholder markets. And that's, that's also where we want to go because I think it makes an impact from our perspective because we, we don't, our data is not super expensive because we use 
really openly data and it enables us to work in areas like that. So mm. that's something we want to focus on going forward. For me, there was a big, in German we say like aha moment, so when you uh, understand something, uh, when you, you showed me on your laptop your um, your program and you said like, and I can show you the boundaries here and your software uh, processed the area and made it and I was like, okay, Of, of course, you're not mapping the whole world and you're yeah, doing the super resolution of the whole world. You're just doing it there where people pay for the service, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and in the beginning, we actually pre-processed and delineated a lot of boundaries everywhere in the world and also ran the super resolution because at that point, we only had technology that we could do it on one sentinel tile at a time. But progressively, you know, the idea is to have one baseline of fundamental data layer and then the update, so to say, is on request. So now we only do it on specific areas that our clients request. And as I showed you exactly that, it's quite exciting for us that now we're able to provide one meter per pixel imagery with boundaries on demand to clients. Uh, and as you, as you saw on the computer, it's processing the GPU and providing the results right on, right on instantly, nice. which is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from a um, region in Germany where they uh, build uh, wines for like, uh, uh, Centuries. Um, yeah. Is there a use case, or have you worked with like wine yards? Um. <laughs> It's a great question. I mean, one we haven't yet. I mean, one day we, we like to, but uh, it's step for step. So I want to do thing do it properly. But we have uh, we have started to do the, we have a next version of deep resolution which we're releasing in the next couple of months, and that's also being able to do uh, count detection, for example. So count detection on oil palm and agave, for example, plantations. And this will really open up that market because then if you can detect a single crop, then you can also run time series of vegetation and, and, and showing the progression of the plants. So, yeah. so eventually, not yet, but soon. <laughs> cool. yeah. So where do you see your um, company in, I don't know, like two years or so 2025? 20, I mean, the, the speed in the new space is really fast right yeah. now. So maybe um, where, where do you see the technology in uh, two, year, two years and where do you see your company then? <laughs> It's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think for us, I'm very excited about where we are now because we have traction from clients and this year is our second year commercial activity. And, For us, we hope to hit around 1.6 to 1.8 million euros in revenue. And for us, it's just exciting to be able to have a product that clients are using. And, and so I'm just humbled by that. But yeah, I think in the next two years, our plan is still to be able to have the same vision. You know, we do boundaries and classification of boundaries with imagery. And I think that market will grow because when we think about high resolution data now or optical data, you almost have to task anything that's one meter per pixel. And the ability for us to create it, provide it in the season on demand to clients, I think will 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 be a will be a good 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 fit for the market, so to say. Yeah, forward. maybe yeah. some other use cases besides yeah. of agricultural, maybe uh, showing, like you said. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely a super cool product, a super cool company. Oh. Uh, thank you so much for the interview. Ich hoffe, euch hat's auch gefallen. Um, ich Verlinke euch unten in der Beschreibung einen Link zur Firma, weil ich finde es wirklich großartig, eine großartige Sache und hoffe, euch hat das Interview genauso viel Spaß gemacht wie mir. Nils, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <lacht>